Andy Wiley. Today I'm going to talk about a very important subject, one I'm very familiar with, how to spot a bad psychologist. Now, a lot of people go to therapists these days for help. Many, many people. And I have gone to therapists for almost 20 years. That's two decades. And in the course of that, I have been re-traumatized. I've been sexually abused. And um, so I'll, I know from hindsight what the red flags that I should have noticed back then which I didn't because I was a vulnerable patient and I didn't know anything about psychology back then. But in the two decades that I had been going to therapy, I learned quite a lot. I had a two year sexual affair with one psychologist. I was regressed by another psychologist. Um, I had another psychologist try to sexually abuse me also. Um, and a whole and a whole gamut of things in between <laughs> so I'm going to talk about in this video how to spot a bad psychologist all right sometimes it's very easy when you know to spot like a person a bad person but other times it isn't because the person seems so very nice and very kind in the beginning and so you develop feelings and you open up to that person those people are the hottest to spot so let's talk about the easy ones first and then we'll talk about the ones that are not so easy to spot a psychologist um, is there to listen okay they should not be telling you what to do that's a, one big red flag. They shouldn't be saying, telling you how to live your life. They're there to listen. A psychologist should respect you and your feelings. They shouldn't push you. They shouldn't have their own agenda. Okay? If you don't feel comfortable talking about something, that's your right. They should not push something. I've had a psychologist do that to me and... It almost gave me a nervous breakdown. He tried to push me talking about my father. He he tried to describe my father as some monster who terrified me. You see, he had an agenda and he was trying to push that agenda onto me. No agendas. A psychologist is not there to push anything on you or to force anything on you. Okay? Don't think because they are they they're a doctor. And they have the doctor degree, some from Yale and Harvard, these big Ivy League schools, right? That cost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. You have to be rich to afford them. Don't think because they have that on their wall, doctor, you know, so from Harvard or from Yale, okay, or Princeton or whatever, that you, you know, oh, what do I know? They're a doctor. I have to listen to them. No, 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 no. Big red flag. They're not supposed to tell you anything or push anything on you or try to con or try to make you talk. If you don't feel like talking, you don't have to. But you go, but but I'm going to therapy. I'm supposed to uh-uh. Nuh-uh. No. Nope, 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 nope. No. You will only talk or you only do what you feel comfortable with. If you don't feel comfortable talking about that subject at that time. You just tell them, I don't feel comfortable talking about this now. And if they don't respect you, you get out, 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 and run. Okay, run, not walk out that door. All right, so let's put it this way. You are in control. Why are you in control? Because you are the consumer. You are the customer. You are paying them. Now, I had a psychologist, Dr. Richard Geis, who I didn't pay at all run from that situation too that is not good for you. you might think oh it's free you know i don't paying a dime run
run. In this life, you get what you pay for. Okay? You get what you pay for. As a consumer who is paying for a product, and the psychologist is a product, you're paying them. If you're not paying them, then there's trouble. All right? Don't get into that situation. Always pay. Watch out for someone who says, don't worry about the money. Watch out. Watch out. They're like drug addicts. They're like pushers on the street, people who sell drugs. What they'll do, first of all, is try to acquaint you with the drug and say, here, take it. It's just a sample. It's free. And then they got you hooked, you see. Don't go for that. You are the consumer. You are paying for their time, okay? So you decide. You're their boss. You're paying for their time. You decide if they're treating you with respect or not. You you decide how you use the time, okay? You're in control. You're in the driver's seat, okay? You are. The patient is in control, is in the driver's seat. If you don't feel like you're in control of your own therapy, out. Get out of it. If you feel like your therapist is pushing their agenda on you, trying to force you to talk about something, get out. And it goes to say, I have to make this clear, that sex is never part of therapy. Ever, ever, ever. Okay? So if your therapist is trying to flirt with you, is trying to come on to you, get out, run, and report them to the licensing board. There is a licensing board in each state, okay? Sex is never part of therapy, ever. No flirting and nothing sexual whatsoever. It doesn't mean you can't talk about sex if you bring it up. The psychologist should never be bringing up anything about sex. If you want to talk about, you can talk about whatever you want. Whatever you want, you can talk about, okay? You're in control. Remember that. You are in the driver's seat. You are in control. You're the patient. You're the consumer. You're paying them for their time. You are paying. Make sure that they respect you and your boundaries. And time is a boundary. I had one psychologist who never showed up on time. That's not respecting me, you know? That's not respecting me to show up late. I'm paying them. I'm their boss. If they were working for me, you know, if you're working for someone, you show up late, you're going to get in trouble. You might be talked to once or twice, but then if you keep showing up late. This psychologist was always late and always, a, and always early, um, early to end the sessions, okay? That's not professional. I told him, you need to be on time. Over and over again, I told him, you need to be on time. Okay, so so watch that. How do they treat you in the session? They're, they should be focused, laser focused on you. That means they don't look at their phone. They don't keep checking their clock or the or the clock on the wall. Like they, If I'm talking to you and I keep looking at the, the clock on the wall, like, no. Laser focused on you. Never taking phone calls. Never looking at their phone. The time is slotted. That 15 minutes or whatever it is, is slotted just for you. You alone. Nothing else. Short of an emergency. I'm going to add that. Short of an emergency, okay? That time is yours. And that psychologist needs to be focused solely on you. It doesn't always happen. Um, I've had psychologists take phone calls plenty of times when I was sitting there, you know, for stupid things. Um, did you make that call to the doctor? And he had this, Dick, Dick Geitz had his, um, wife on speakerphone he goes i'm in with a patient right now i could hear her because she was on speakerphone oh you told me you didn't have any patients so he got caught in a lie 
another psychologist taken um dr jeffrey Fortgang. um he, his wife wasn't on speakerphone he was smart but hello uh oh oh i'm i'm with a patient now i can't have lunch yeah save save me to my lunch when um i get done the wife is calling saying your lunch is ready i mean duh i mean stupid things you don't call your your the psychologist of your daughter his daughter his wife whatever unless it's an emergency not to say your lunch is ready or did you make that phone call or whatever you know they should know better you know because these people were married to therapists so they were therapists themselves no phone calls during your time make sure they're on time make sure they're they're empathic and non-judgmental okay you're supposed to be able to tell your therapist anything okay um and a lot of them just can't handle their transfer the counter transference okay counter transference is their reaction toward you they're not supposed to act on the counter transference whatever reaction they have towards you they're supposed to bring to their colleagues or their um supervised supervisors colleagues or in their own therapy talk about that but they're never supposed to you know react to anything you have to say even if you have to say something like you know anything negative if you say you know um you look ugly or you know it doesn't matter what what you say they cannot react to it unless it's something threatening okay if you threaten them or their family if you say something threatening other than that you are free to say whatever you feel say talk it's called talk therapy not act not act out but talk a lot of therapists cannot handle me talking um i, I asked one ther my, one psychologist you know why did you give up your dream of being a rock star jeffrey Fortgang wrote the song for rod stewart some guys have all the luck he wrote those lyrics if you google rod stewart's song some guys have all the luck You'll see on the bottom, Jeffrey Fortgang. He was a musician, and he gave that up. He had his own band and everything. He gave that up to become a psychologist. Now, there's nothing wrong with me asking him a question, but he got very angry and defensive. And he goes, why should you assess my life? You see? That's counter-transference. I mean, all of them, every single one of my psychologists had counter acted on the counter transference it's, you're going to have the transference it's only natural in therapy you know i'm going to react to what my shrink brings in the room and he's going to react to me but as a professional doctor he's not supposed to um, act on it he's supposed to bring it and discuss it in his own therapy or with his own colleagues or supervisor so make sure that the therapist um you know is, is compassionate doesn't react to what you say um you know and if they make a mistake and they do they should own it and apologize and try to make up for it those three things if the therapist is only a human being okay if they make a mistake own the mistake admit it don't deny it how many how many psychologists deny everything <laughs> own it apologize I did, yes, I reacted last session when you told me um, I gave up my dream of being a rock star. Um, I did react negatively. Yeah, I'm very, very sorry. I shouldn't have done that. It wasn't professional of me to do that. That was just your opinion. You know, I should, you know, you're allowed to have your opinion, especially in your own therapy. <laughs> and then make up for it. Say, I, I'm going to try better. I'm going to work on that. You know, so next, you know, I'm going to talk to uh, a colleague or something and I'll, or I'm going to try to recognize that in myself. So next time I'm not quick to react to that. There you go, you know. So that's always important because your therapist is a human and as a human, your therapist will make mistakes as long as they you know, own up to it, apologize for it and try to do better next time, you know. That's all you can ask of anyone in life, right? Oh, let's see what other things there are. <clears throat> they have, like I said, they have to respect your time. 
show up on time. Um, don't end the sessions early. Um, <clears throat> uh, no, not to um, react to that counter-transference. Apologize and make up for any mistakes they make. Sex is never included ever in any therapy. <clears throat> and not to push their own agenda. You're the patient. You're in control. Um, they should not be pushing their agenda. A good psychologist will ask you questions. <clears throat> Open-ended questions that make you think. Like one good psychologist, um, he was a black, he was the only black psychologist I had, uh, um, Ben Day. He asked a good question um, when I was talking about Dr. Richard Geis, because I often talked about my other psychologists um, during my therapies with new psychologists because they, re they traumatized me so much. So um, he asked me, why do you want to continue seeing someone who always hurts you? That's an open-ended question. That made me really think. You know, I said, because I love him. But it still has me thinking to this day, why did I do this? Why did I go through those years of torment? Dr. Richard Geist tried to regress me down to a child. Now, it's, it's, it was, you know, it was so, like, overwhelming, you know, because I never had that all my life because I had a schizophrenic father who was in and out of mental hospitals and a very narcissistic mother who used to beat me up and blame me for her um, bad marriage. So when he came in and regressed me as a child and had me lay on his lap and coddled, coddled me and swaddled me in a blanket and read children's stories to me, it was overwhelmingly, I felt so safe and loved. But that's not okay. That's acting out. A psychologist should never act out in a therapy, okay? The boundary is he sits in his chair and you sit in your chair. If you ask for a hug from time to time, if you ask the patient, it's fine. You're only human. But a hug is a quick hug, not like coddling and holding a patient. You know, you know the difference, right? You know when you're holding your lover and you know when you give a hug to your girlfriend. You know the difference, right? It's not supposed to be the kind of holding you, you do with a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's the kind of hug you would give a, a friend, right? That's, there's a big difference. No, see, he was acting out. He was trying to reparent me, but that's not his job as a psychologist to be um, the parent I never had, see? And that ended up re-traumatizing me. So watch out for those psychologists who think they're doing good, right? By trying to act, you know, as a parent. They're not your parents, okay? They shouldn't be acting as a parent. That's not their role. So even though it might, you know, feel so good for someone to care about you or call you up and say, are you doing okay? No, that's not the job of the psychologists to be checking up on you like a parent does a child watch out for that because <clears throat> when you're in the middle of that it can feel so nurturing and so loving and so like out of this world like oh my god this is the best psychologist but it turned out to be the worst psychologist i have during that time i thought he was so loving and devoted uh, I could call him up 24-7. Um, he, he coddled me like a little child, laying in his lap, putting a blanket around me, reading me children's books. And it just felt so good. I didn't quite, I mean, I did question it in the back of my mind, but I said, this feels too good, you know, to let go. It turned out to be the worst therapy in my life. Even though it didn't involve sex. It was the, because... He couldn't maintain that daddy role for long. And it just backfired. He withdrew completely. Um, he got burnt out. It doesn't work. They can't maintain that. It, it doesn't work. 
and then I felt re-traumatized all over again. So watch out for your psychologist trying to fill a role in your life. Their job is to listen, okay? Their job is not to fill a role, not to be a boyfriend, not to be a, a mother or a father or even a friend. You cannot be friends with your psychologist. Like you have friends out there in the real world, they're not your friends. The relationship is totally, it is totally, totally different. Why is it different? Because it's a one-sided relationship. Friends on the outside world is supposed to be two-way. Friendship is always a two-way street. A psychologist is never a two-way street. It's a one-sided relationship. It's not a real, it is real, but it's not like a, real relationship on the outside of the therapy room like a real friend would be like a real parent okay it's one side you don't know anything about your psychologist that's the way it's supposed to be and if and if they're talking about themselves that's self-disclosure it's okay to use it if it's for the patient's need um, occasionally but the psychologist is not supposed to be sitting there talking about themselves Another big red flag. If they start talking about themselves, out the door, run. They're supposed to be very diligent when they use self-disclosure. When they talk about themselves and share a piece of their life with you, it's supposed to be for you and, and the patient's interest, okay? Not like Dick Geist, oh, my wife has breast cancer. That wasn't in my interest, you know? It's supposed to be in the patient's interest and it's not supposed to be used often so if your psychologist is sitting there telling you talking about himself run it's all supposed to be about you okay now if you ask a question should they answer it depends it depends if they feel comfortable answering it it depends if it's in your interest you know um should they answer that's not like black and white it's not cut and dry you know, the answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. But, you know, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Depends on the situation. But the psychologist is not supposed to be there talking about himself. I can't stress that enough. It's all about you. You're the patient. That's how it's different. That's how it's not a friendship. You might think your psychologist is your friend, but they're not your friend, okay? They're not they're there for you you're not there for them you see in a friendship is a two-way you're there for your friend or it's supposed to be and your friend is there for you 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 disclose about yourself and your friend discloses about their that you get to know each other like that not in the therapy office not in therapy okay you're not supposed to know about your psycho a very little very little they're supposed to know all about you. So if they start talking, run. When therapy ends, that's another big one. I had one write me an email after two years saying, I can't work with you anymore. Never. Unethical. Unethical. You are the consumer. You are paying. Okay. You decide when you want to end therapy. Not the psychologist. Okay. And never a unilateral decision pushed on someone who doesn't want to end i w went to his office i was bawling bawling saying please give me another chance it's been two years in therapy with you please never ever ever unethical unethical you are the consumer you decide when you no longer need therapy and it's a discussion you can go in and say you know what? I think I'm feeling better. I don't need any uh, more therapy. And then the psychologist, a good one, would say, well, let's discuss that. Can we discuss it over, you know, a couple more sessions? You know, it's up to the patient. Okay? It's not the therapist, unless you're, you know, threatening them or their life or something. The, the therapist is never supposed to end the therapy. It's always the patient who decides how much therapy, how often, how often do they want to come? when they want to end the treatment it's never up to the psychologist the patient might ask the psychologist do you think i'm getting better i really feel like i don't need to come here anymore and then it's a mutual discussion okay 
if your psychologist tries to unilaterally end the therapy and you don't feel ready, report that person to the licensing board. Because we, you got to remember this. You, as a patient, are always in the driver's seat. You decide when to start and stop, you know, when, when to go, when not to go. And you might want to go back, right? You might feel, I feel good enough right now to end the treatment, but a later point down the road, I might want to come back. It's your decision. So, oh, so that's a, that's a few things, um, that I've learned. I mean, there's probably a whole lot more, you know, and, um. I figure I spent like 25 minutes already talking about this. So if you know anything different, um, you tell me in the comments if, if you have any more, you know, things to say or, or during your treatment. But this, you know, the stigma about seeing a psychologist or going for therapy is not, there isn't that stigma like in the past it was. I mean, most of the people I know or knew were in therapy at one point in their life. I think practically everyone. I don't think that. I don't think there's a person I know that wasn't in therapy at least once in their life. I mean, it's very, very common. It's like saying you're going to the dentist. No one thinks anything of that. Before there was a stigma. Oh, that person is seeing a psychologist. They must be crazy. They're loony. They're loony. They're going to a shrink. But no. So I hope I gave you some red flags as how to spot a bad therapist. And, you know, it can be helpful if you decide to go to therapy or go back to therapy.